before we get into our short commentary, I want to give a moment of silence to one of our fallen ancestors on the anniversary of his assassination, the brother we once knew of as Malcolm X Shabazz. I was eight or nine years old when I was first introduced to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I feel like something was on my face. And uh, that's where some may call my awakening began. I became instantly interested in the struggle of the people that I was born from instantly as a child I was not taught nobody I feel like someone's on my face nobody um, taught me that we should fight against an oppressor in fact I was a scary child but even as a child, there was just something in me that wanted me or made me to want to rebel against injustice and an oppressor. Not only we as a people, but even on the individual level, I don't like seeing nobody mistreated. I do not like injustice. I do not like to see when people are treated unfair. I don't like seeing people being bullied. I don't like those things. Never have. So my journey into what we call black consciousness or the black revolution or the civil rights struggle or whatever, my journey began when I was eight, nine years old. And I have experienced a lot in my life. Even though I was a member even though I was influenced by the nation of Islam, I did read literature from other ideology. And I also went to the meetings of other people that was supposed to be in the struggle. So, I know about much of this. I'm supposed to be impressed because you talk loud because you can articulate some of you have charisma and you get the information and you, you know your history I'm supposed to be impressed I heard that might be exciting to you it might be new to you it's 45 over years for me I am not impressed by your ADOS. I'm not impressed by your aboriginal this. I'm not impressed by your comedic science and melanated scholarship and all this stuff that y'all excited about. It means nothing. I'm not supposed to be impressed. When I first learned about what the white man done to my people. You don't know nothing about me. You don't know what I would do. But I had a hatred for the enemy. And I can't even describe it on YouTube. You just don't know. My, in my immaturity and being a youth, you have no idea. You thinking that you're talking all bad. Not only will I talk bad, I put a hurting on you. 
I'm not going to get into that. And so this is the mindset that I had when I joined the Nation of Islam because of their rhetoric. So I thought I'm going to be part of rebellion. A slave rebellion. That's what I thought. Revolution. And as time goes by, the only thing I ever done was sell a bean pie. Wear a fancy suit. Going to church. And that's all black YouTube social media is. Nothing but a big church. What do they say? Your your bark is worse than your bite. You're not a threat to nobody. During the 60's clearly there was a threat. The government got involved. And the government harassed. And the government put in jail. And the government put you in the morgue. They're not harassing nobody. The government. The police. They're not harassing the nation of Islam. Or this comedic stuff. Or Sanetta. Or Tariq Nasheed. Or Young. They ain't bothering none of these people. That should tell you something. All these people huffing and puffing talking about they're revolutionaries. I'm a black nationalist. They're not being harassed. Living a good, peaceful, loving life. It's funny. Those who were a threat. And got the attention of J. Edgar Hoover. Drastic action had to be taken upon them. I thought that's what I was joining. I thought I was becoming and in, in involved in my day and time. I thought I was going to be, I was involved in revolution. This is 2022. It's a joke. Huffing and puffing and the science and, and. But I was mature. I wasn't. I was a, a, a youth. And this is how they get you. Because you're immature. And just like church. They play on your emotions. They make you emotional. And some of us get so emotional. We will get violent. But most of y'all are cowards. You're not going to get violent like that. You're just going to run your mouth and talk a bunch of crap. Will you donate to my cash app? Will you donate to my GoFundMe? That's what it's about for you. And then when somebody don't agree with your crap, oh, you a coon. And see, I know where you're coming from. You think that you impress me. I was like you. Except actually I was smarter and more wise than you are. And I'm I'm real with mine. Back in the day, I, I call people coons and toms and sambos. You think you're better than somebody. But as I mature, I stop doing that. You calling people coons and toms and sambos, and you don't have a pot to piss in. You drink the same water that the coons and the sambos drink. Use the same paper. Breathe the same air. Use the same internet. What make you different? What make you special? You an integrationist. You right here with me. You right here with the coons and the sambos. That's why you can talk about them. Because you're not separated. You're integrated like everybody else. Think you better than somebody. And they so hateful. They talk tough and hate everybody. You claim that you love black people. I do this for my people. I love black people. You're a damn lie. 
You just want slaves for your plantation just like everybody else. You just want to exploit people for your personal agenda just like everybody. You don't love no damn body. You love so much. You call the people you love Uncle Tom, Sambo, Nigga, Coons, and all this other stuff. Your mindset is just like the white races. They hate everybody. They don't like the homosexuals. They don't like the Jews. It's, they don't like the rednecks. You have the same mindset. But they're supposed to be for the white people. But they will kill. Now, the white races are different from you because they will bomb. They will kill. They're not just running their mouth. You ain't going to do a damn thing. I began to understand as I mature. And when we talk about revolution, when we talk about nation building. And we try to compare the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, the so-called Negro in this country. We talk about revolution and nation building and we try to compare ourselves to other people. But we can't. All we've ever known is slavery. Whether you like it or not. You talk about Kemet and you talk about the, the civilizations you don't know nothing about that. You only know America. You never built no nation. You have no motherland. Oh, Africa is the mother. You have no motherland. Because if you had a motherland, you could take your mother dumb ass back to, to the damn land. You right here. A revolution for what? The only thing we asked for basically in the 1960s was leave us the hell alone. We want to be treated fair. This is all we know. Our situation is unique. You cannot compare us to the Chinese Revolution or the French Revolution because those people never were slaves. Here you are trying to compare a people who are just a little over a hundred years out of slavery. Try to compare them to people who know what it is to have their own lands, control their resources, live independently. Our situation is different. And that's why we cannot move the people. And that's why we cannot focus on one identity that all of us can rally around. It's because we're like the slaves. We're still acting like the slaves on the plantation. You don't act like free people. You don't act like a revolutionary. You don't act like a nation builder. Because there's only one nation. You are fighting for one struggle, one purpose, one goal. You're all divided up. But you're tough. And you're not going to act too bad. You know what line not to cross. Because you don't want to go to jail. You don't want to go to prison. You don't want the government to harass you. I was listening to a Pan African. And he was talking about. Some situation he had at a school meeting or something. And the police got involved. He don't want no. That goes to show you he's not a revolutionary. He don't want to handle that kind of stuff. But these pieces of trash. Fake black revolutionary. I'm so happy that the masses of people. Aren't getting caught up. In your foolishness. Again, a shout out to a real revolutionary, Brother Malcolm X. May he rest in peace.